Honeys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to have you here because we're going to talk about a very important topic, which is agents and specifically how to get an agent in Toronto. Let's get into it. This industry has gone through a lot, just even in this last year alone. I think because of the strikes, a lot of things has changed and I think we will be adapting to something new in the industry. What that is exactly is unsure. And it's hard to say, like last video I did say that the industry is making a comeback and I do think it is, but I think it is also, it's going to be a weird comeback. I do think that. And I see that it's a bit still of a slow getting back into things, but I think nonetheless, I think it's still important for us to kind of figure out if we're looking for an agent and we want to get into the industry, I think this is a good time for us to kind of get our stuff ready, get our stuff going, that if that does feel like it's a time for you to start applying, then you're ready to go and you possibly will be getting an agent. The first thing I'm gonna say is I wouldn't recommend anyone be applying right now, right away. The reason is why is because the industry hasn't made the comeback yet as we're expecting. It's a slow start in. There are things that are filming in Toronto, not as much as there should be, but there are things filming. And I think agents right now are trying to figure out what exactly can we do and what exactly is happening. I think they're trying to figure out what they can do with the roster they have at the moment. So I wouldn't go applying right away. I would give it a little bit of time to kind of wait how March goes around, how February goes, just to see how things are rolling. And the best way where you can do this is go onto the actual website this is open to the public for everybody and on their website they're going to have a tab there where you can see what is shooting in Toronto right now this will kind of give you a breakdown of everything that's shooting who's casting it like what's going on and this is a great way for you to kind of take a look at this and just be like okay like are we really busy are we not that busy and this can kind of help you gauge whether you should apply right now or maybe wait till a few more things are filming The first thing that you're going to need to be applying to agents is a package. Your package is going to consist of three things, your resume, your headshots, and a demo. If you're looking to do voiceover, it'll have a voiceover reel as well. And possibly like 50% of the time, some agents will be asking for a cover letter. So that will be part of your package. If they don't ask for a cover letter, what you will do is that you will use the email body that you are using to apply. In that email body section, you could do like a mini version of what your cover letter is. And that would sort of be like, the, the cover letter for the agent. I will do a quick little breakdown on the package of what exactly it includes. Your demo would be your best work. It would be scene work, monologues, actual things that you've legitimately been in, filmed. You can kind of mix and match. Obviously put the best work you have at the very front because you, agents will not watch the entire three minutes. They try to watch only like the first 10 seconds. And if their attention is grabbed within the first 10 seconds of the uh, demo, then they will continue watching a little bit of it. So make sure that your best work is always in the beginning. Your resume is going to have your theater work, your film work, your professional education, or your acting classes, your skills. Please do not be lying on your resume. I've talked about this a lot. It is a thing that agents and cast directors do not like because if you lie, and this has happened, I've seen this, if you lie and then you get literally called to be like a professional tennis player, you will be in a room with legitimate professional tennis player. And if you've never picked up a racket before, you just made yourself look not amazing. And now your agent doesn't look amazing because well, they don't actually know that if you tell them on a resume that you're, you're really good at tennis, they're gonna assume that you know what you're doing so they will submit you for a role like that. And then it just doesn't look good on the agent as well. So please don't lie on your resume. Try to be honest, honest as you can. And if you can't, if you don't have a lot of skills, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. The last thing that you will need that these are like the three major was the headshots. Your headshots is what is going to get you into that room with the agent. This is super important. This will talk your demo and this will also top your resume your headshots if you're a beginner actor they need to be superb and I mean like you want to go with a professional headshot photographer I know that they are hefty I get that but we're talking this is your career so you want to kind of indulge in this kind of stuff do not get your parent or a friend or whatever like some random person to take photos of you don't take your own photos these are not selfies you want to legitimately put the time and effort into getting legit headshots so then you can really work it in your email and in your application and getting in with that agent 
Obviously your voiceover reel is something optional. If you don't wanna do voiceover, that's fine, scratch it off. But it'd be the same thing essentially as your demo reel. You could actually pay people to do a voiceover reel. That's what I did. They do it super professional. They'll send you a bunch of like little like audio commercials and you choose what you feel would be your voice. And then you would um, shoot it with them or like record it with them. They edit it to you and then you have a voiceover reel. So that's an option for you as well. And then the last is the cover letter. Your cover letter is something that you want to sell yourself. Like you are your own brand. You are your own company. You are a walking advertisement. So you want to sell to the agent why they should be choosing you. And what I like to do is my cover letter. I like to put a little paragraph of like, why this agent? Why did you choose this agency? Seriously. I mean, I know it's such a dumb question because you're like, well, I want to be represented. Yeah, I, get, I know that. Trust me. I totally get that. But try to make it like connect to the agency. Like, for example, there's an I know there's an agency that's all all women. And I think that's really awesome. I think in a, in a male dominating industry to have an agency that's actually quite well known and quite top tier be all women. I'm like, I love that. Yes. Magnifique, chef's kiss. Like I would write that on the cover being like, I saw your roster or sorry, I saw your website and I love the fact that every agent that works with you is all women and I love that or blah, blah, blah. Like you can say things that connect it to the agency. So then you're not just saying like a generic, like blah, 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 blah. Send it out to 25 agents. When you're looking at your list of agents, what really I think is important is that you wanna go through a list of the agencies and see which ones you wanna be represented by and you want to group them in specific groups. So group one would be your first five, though those are like the top, top. Like you definitely wanna be represented by those. So go and send out, let's say on a Monday to your top five. Then you would group your group two, which would be like your second choice of five agents. And then group three would be your third choice and so on. The reason why I say it like that is because it is very really quite mentally and physically draining hard to be applying to almost 50 agencies in one day. There's a lot of room for mistake for that where you by accident write the wrong name to the wrong agency or you forget to attach something. It's just a lot of like staring at the computer and doing it. It also helps you kind of understand, again, what agency, who do they represent? Why do you like this agency? What about them do you like? This helps you kind of make it more personable with the agency. So when I apply, I would group them and I would do like group A on a Monday, then I'd wait four days and I'd do group B on like the Thursday, then wait another four or five days and then do group C because this also gives you an opportunity to give time for the agents to open their email, look at it, see if they like it and get back to you, which I think is really important as well. When you're looking at the list of the agencies, where do you find this list? Easy. You want to go on the Actra website and there is a tab where it's agents directory and you go into this agent directory and every agent that is like legit will be connected to Actra. It doesn't mean that you have to be union. No, it just means that they're a legitimately registered agency. They are safe. They're not going to be weird. They're not going to like try to take money from you or anything like that. They're not going to be like, we're not, this is not like max agency. Max agency is not on the Actra list and there's a reason why. So this is where I'm talking about where you want to get an agent that's from the Actra list. Now, if you want to go even farther, you would go on this website called TAMAC, T-A-M-A-C, T-A-M-A-C. I said that right. And TAMAC is like the Toronto Alliance something association, and it is primarily for actors. So they're, it's like another like union in the sense that they are connected to. These are much a bit more of the bigger ones. They are the ones that have been like in the industry for like 20, 25 years. They represent a lot of more bigger union actors. So if you were union, it might even be better for you to get an agent that's part of Actra and TAMAC. Like I, my agency is part of Actra and TAMAC. That's something there, but don't sweat it if your first agent or your next agent is not part of the TAMAC list. As long as they're part of Actra, it is very good. Now, there are some new agents that are coming into the scene that because they're green and they're new, they haven't had a chance to get themselves registered registered on Actra because I think this, I don't know how it works on the agent side, but from what I understand, I think it takes time. So it's not like if you know an agency of someone who's on there and it's like legit, they don't ask you for like monthly fees and they're not like a scam max agency vibe. Like that's like, 
then it's, you're fine. You should be okay. But I would still do your research. I would still see who they represent and I would still kind of check out what's going on there. I would really recommend you making sure that your agent is on that actor list because it would just make life 10 times easier for you. Another thing that you want to do is go on IMDb and tape, like literally type in the agency's name or the agent specifically that you want to be represented by. The reason why I say this is because you don't want to cut your losses if you go on their roster and you see that they have a bunch bunch of redhead women in their mid to late 20s, they probably won't hire you. They probably will not ask you to be a part of their agency because they already have five of them that are redheads and look like me. That's too many for them. They don't need that many. If you still want to submit it, you're more than welcome to, but that's most of the time kind of what will be happening. And it's just more time for you because you're submitting to an agency that most likely will not take you on because based on they have so many looks of who you already look like. When you do the applying, you wanna make sure that you're applying in certain times. Like for example, don't apply during the Christmas break. They're not checking their emails. They're off on vacation. Your, your email is just gonna literally be piled up with a hundred other emails. And when they do open up their emails, like back in coming into January, they're not really thinking about signing people on because they either already did the signing prior to Christmas to start the new year with a new roster, or they're not looking to sign anything because they're about to gear up to a very big busy pilot season and a pilot, or sorry, a big year itself. So they're like, I don't really have the space or capacity to be taking on more people. The summer is a weird one. I hear people being like, no, the summer is great because it's so busy. They maybe want to take people on. And I have seen people get signed during the summer, but then I also have seen people get the regular email of like, hey, sorry, like I'm just busy already with the clients that I have. I don't have space for anyone right now, which is true because the summer is very busy for us. So they're not even like thinking of signing someone on. So I would just gauge with that, but definitely Christmas season, don't be applying during Christmas season. It is not gonna work. It very rarely if it actually ends up working with you, but I've seen a million of my acting friends apply during Christmas and it just never went anywhere because of the season. When you're actually putting your package all together, if you're writing an email, keep the email short to the point. If you're attaching a cover letter, you don't need to do another small like form of a cover letter on the email. You don't need to do that. It's quick to the point, easy, bang, 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 one, two, three, like, hey, my name is Anastasia. I'm a Toronto-based actor. I'm looking for representation for film, TV, like voice and blah, blah, blah. I've attached this and this and this for you. I'm really looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you for your time. Great, done. Super to the point, because agents don't have time to be reading like your entire story right off the email. They just want to know, why are you emailing me? What do you want? Let's get down to business. And then if they like you, they'll look at the rest of the package. Now, if they don't want a cover letter, you can do a small version of your cover letter on the email, but still keep it to the point. Like, hi, I did this and this and this. My newest project was blah, blah, blah. Or uh, something fun is I've been in acting class with uh, Pro Actors Lab, Jeff Clark. Everybody knows Pro Actors Lab, great, awesome. Or like something fun fact about you and then one little sentence about them being like, oh, I noticed that uh, you are a boutique agency and I love small agencies because I feel like there's more room for a personal connection. You can kind of word it in that sense and then just end it with looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you for your time, sincerely, Anastasia. End of story. Once you send out the email, what you can do is you can follow up in about two weeks. I'd give the minimum, minimum, minimum two weeks to open this kind of stuff up. I've had agents actually, when I did my application for agencies like three or four years ago, I actually had agents reach out to me like almost three months after being like, hey, I saw that you applied, like are you still looking for a representation? So I wouldn't be super bummed out if you don't hear from them right away in two weeks, like it can take some time, but you could do just a gentle follow-up after two weeks. I wouldn't do more than that. Like I wouldn't follow up three times with them. If they didn't answer from you, or if they said no, then obviously don't follow up. If they didn't answer you for thousand percent, you can follow up. Gentle, easy follow up. Don't be super annoying. Just kind of be like, hey, just want to see if you saw me. I'm here and I just want to see if you saw my application. Please, please, please do not get upset if you don't get an agent. Getting an agent is a very difficult thing. I'm just going to be honest. It's not easy. And I think after COVID, the amount of us actors have doubled because now it's easier to be an actor per se, because you don't actually have to go to the auditions. Everything's done from the comfort of your own home. If you don't hear from them, it could mean a million of things. A, they could literally have missed the email um, because they're not looking for anyone. B, they already have many people that look like you, so they just don't need to add to their roster. C, 
it's just too busy for them. They're unable to like take tackle on another person. Like it, it could mean a million things. Also, they could have just been like, I didn't like the headshots while the other person must have loved the headshots. It's very so subjective. It really truly depends on what goes on. Please don't take it personally. I would wait another six months until you want to apply again because once you apply after six months, you something new could have happened. You continue auditioning, continue doing small little projects like um, maybe you'll get a new set of headshots or you want to change your look or whatever. I would apply like six to eight months after you did the original apply and fingers crossed that you will get something then. Okay, honeys, that was my quick little breakdown on how to get an agent here in Toronto. Let me know if you want me to do a more intensive breakdown on demos, resumes, like the whole package. I'd love to talk about that. So let me know in the comments down below. I hope you have all a wonderful Friday and a happy weekend and I'm gonna see you all next Friday. Bye, honeys.